and kind of evolved into the new age field through finding some some wonderful people like Paul Winter Consort and you inspired some wonderful people um, you got to know and then you got to work with some of those wonderful people as well. Um, yeah. I mean, some of the greats you got to work with. Uh, I love the work you did with um, Carlos uh, Nakai and also yeah. you, you knew a guy that we just have had here a few times. Nwong Chichong. Nwong yeah, Nwong Ketcha. Yeah, he's an old friend. Yeah, Rita Coolidge, and got to work with um, um, some other South American flautists as well. And uh, meanwhile, you landed up somewhere between all that traveling over here on Maui. And um, <laughs> what brought you over to Maui in the first place? Oh my God, I just love Maui so much. Um, I don't know, just the land, the ocean, you know, the whales being, you know, so far away from any major landmass. I mean, Maui to me is just heaven. It's just, I love it so much. And when you came, did you start your own studio here immediately? You, I know you have a studio in your home. Yeah, I always have to have a studio. I've had a studio wherever I go for the last 20 years because that's really, I mean, thank God for that too because there's nothing like creative control and there's nothing like, being able to mix and engineer your own music and not have to ask for people to help you and stuff like that. Well, so. and you know what you want. <laughs> exactly. I know exactly what I want, and I'm tired of you know trying to communicate that to other people. Yeah. So that's one of the best things I ever did was take that learning curve. And um, it is. You know, a, it's uh, a big learning curve, and it, of course it's constantly changing because more and more is yeah, happening. It, it continues. Every time I upgrade it, it's another learning curve, and it's just, it's ridiculous. It's I know. like, oh my God, the music business keeps changing in every aspect so fast, it just makes your head spin. Well, you had the big year uh, last year, was was it the year, no, the year before last was you won your Grammy. You won for Dancing on the Water, Dancing mm -hmm. on Water in 2017, and that was yeah. after you'd been nominated for 13 Grammys. You got the Grammy Award in 2017, and I happened to be there in that theater. Uh, oh, yeah? And, and yeah, I, I saw you. I got a picture of you walking down just after it was announced, and you just had this look on your face that was priceless. I couldn't even describe it, <laughs> but it was like, you know, a lifetime of work, and it is there is that moment. I mean, it's great being nominated for a Grammy alone 13 times, but that moment you were called and, and received the Grammy, what, do you remember anything that was going through your mind, or was it all a blank? Oh, my God. It was a rush. I mean, I wrote a blog about it and that I posted on my website because it was actually, like, it was mind-boggling because I had been nominated 13 times in the first 12 times I did not win. So when I finally won the 13th time, I was a little bit in shock. And I'm standing backstage. And there's a nice man back there, and he's saying, like, you know, congratulations, and, you know, I'm going to lead you through the acceptance process, you know, because there's all these interviews and all these things and photos you have to do. And it was almost like the guy was talking to me and saying, Peter, you've been in an accident, but if you listen to my <laughs> voice and do everything I tell you to do, everything can be just fine. That's, that's wonderful. I know, that's shock. That's called shock. <laughs> yeah. I remember that guy. I don't remember his name, but I sure appreciated him being there. Wow, that is wonderful. Well, you've done like over 60 albums and of course lots of soundtracks and all of that, yeah. but it 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 keeps going and you have a beautiful new a beautiful new CD that was once again nominated for a Grammy. Yeah, it's my 14th nomination. Wow. And and and, and I love the record too. I love Dancing on Water and I love this new album Wings. They're very different. They're very, they're very simple production-wise, like they're mostly just piano, but they're very different because Dancing on Water is all improvised and Wings is all composition. But they're original, so it, original improvisations done in your piano here on Maui? Wings? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that they are songs that evolved over a period of time that I, you know, that I you know, let them crystallize and let them, you know, become like a composition. I can play all the songs on the Wings album. I well, can't play any of the songs on the Dancing on Water album. So interesting. Those are all improvised, and they were just one-time one -time improvs. But wow. on the Wings album, I can, I can play all those songs. And I do, actually, almost every day, because I still love playing them. They feel good to play. What do you do when you're on the road to, to be able to play every day? Because, I mean, you've been on the road. You were, you've been touring now for a while, haven't you? 
Yeah, well, I'm playing a lot, so I don't need to practice because I'm playing every <laughs> night. Right? That's great. Your practice is your performance on stage. <laughs> right. right. Well, where have you gone to? Where have you been? Um, recently, I was in South Korea, then I was in New York City, then I was in L.A., then I'm doing some gigs around Colorado, I'm going to Santa Fe this weekend, so been around. And then when I get to Maui, I've got a home concert in Kihei. When are you getting December back? For December what? 20th? My home concert in Kihei is December 27th. Oh, the, oh my gosh, just a couple of days after Christmas. Yeah. Uh, for those people who are not aware of it, Peter, your home concerts are kind of a spiritual experience. And, um, and of course, it's like a homecoming as well. You have your regular yeah. fans who wouldn't miss it. Um, then there's some who still have not had a chance to lay under your piano, and right. uh, that's become a big deal. In fact, some of the songs from Dancing on Water were actually created as people lay underneath your piano here in Maui, wasn't it? All of them were. <laughs> the whole album is from that. Yeah. I love it. I love it. And and so beautiful and magical, and that was the one that got you the Grammy, you know? Uh, I know. It was so perfect. Yeah, absolutely true. But... But you have a lovely piano, an absolutely beautiful piano. You've had that one how long? Uh, about 20 years. Wow, so it's got the whole vibration of energy there. It's changed. It looks like rosewood, but it's not. What's it made out of? Mahogany. Oh, it's mahogany. It's a good sound. Oh, my gosh. What brand is it? It's a Young Chang Kronberger. Sounds German. It's a, it's a cross between a German and a Korean piano. There's a cross between a German and a Korean piano. I can't, I mind, yeah. my mind boggles. <laughs> well, that's very common, actually, because Yamaha bought Bosendorfer about 15 years ago, and they've integrated those two pianos. So a lot of the new Yamaha pianos are actually a cross between a Japanese and a German piano. Interesting. I did not know that. Wow. What was it yeah. like for you to play in South Korea? I mean, because it's a whole different world there in South Korea, and it's... I think a lot of us need to learn more about it. You know, we're not that far from South Korea here, but a lot of us haven't yet done that. And I, I know so many musicians who go to Japan on a regular basis, but I don't hear about a lot of musicians going to South Korea. Yeah, it's interesting because, you know, you kind of, you know, you don't really know what to expect. But what I found is that they are super enthusiastic. I've had, you know, I've played some larger concerts there, like a thousand people or so. And I asked the promoters if I could invite people to come up to lie under the piano, and the promoters are like, no, 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 Korean people are not going to do that. They're much too self-conscious and uh, too formal. And I said, are you sure? Can we just try it? And then they finally said, okay, well, you can try it, but don't be, you know, don't take it personally if no one comes up. You know, people just don't do that here. And so I'm at the concert. I'm talking to the people from the stage. And I didn't even get done saying that I'd like to invite people to come and lie under the piano when, like, 50 people like, <gasps> ran towards the stage and stormed the stage. Oh, my gosh. There, there was a line. I mean, I had to actually ask people to stop and to, <laughs> and to, and to let the people that couldn't, couldn't run, like the older people, walk to the stage. Amazing. Because they were so enthusiastic and so eager for an experience that was a little outside of the box, you know? Amazing, amazing. And this was a concert hall, right? This was a, yeah, it was a legit concert hall, you know, with, uh, you know, like a thousand people there. And that's happened every time. I've been there like five times, and every time I ask people to come lying to the piano, they just love it. And you do this in your home, and these home concerts do sell out. I know they're very popular, and especially uh, at the uh, holiday time, but... So, you know, your site, actually people can see pictures on your website of uh, people laying under the piano um, and to get an idea of what it's like. And you go about three at a time now, right? I mean, the days of you having one person under piano are pretty much by appointment now, right? Exactly. Well, the one person's by appointment and, and concerts. It's anywhere from, depending on the size of the piano, anywhere from three to seven people at a time. If I have a nine-foot grand, I can get like seven people under there. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true it's truly amazing to me it's like wow uh and 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 um some of these people and i wonder if this happened in south korea when you had them under the piano did they feel like it was really a powerful experience and could they feel the difference laying under that piano yeah that's what everyone says 
That's amazing. Amazing. So, so when you do these events um, that are special, uh, you're, you're basically used to being on the road a lot of the year. About how much time out of the year do you do, you do your tours now? Uh, I don't know. It varies. I do. I only do like about fifty or sixty concerts a year. Only. So, only. Did you yeah, just say only the- fifty or sixty concerts a year? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a second. That's a lot, Peter. <laughs> it's it's not that much. Actually, it's a good amount. Mm-hmm. It's a it feels good. Um. So I mean, I try to be on Maui as much as possible. Obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's hard because. I mean, you have your son here and everything, and it, 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 there's a lot of ties. And, and you love, and the pictures you take, I have to say, Peter, you have a, a brilliant eye, and you take pictures of the sunset um, that are just amazing. I mean, they're, they're, they're really National Geographic quality, beautiful, beautiful pictures. Just from your iPhone, right? Isn't it your phone that phone is taking? Yeah, up? from my iPhone, but I tweak them. Them a little bit. I tweak mine too. I have to say I do, but they're beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Speaking of that, I love the uh, beautiful hummingbird on the cover of your new CD. I don't know where that came from, but it's a lovely image. Yeah, that's a beautiful cover. That's one of my favorite covers ever. It's different than some of the others too. Yeah. Did you feel I something like change? I mean, I obviously you've gone through a lot of different things. You always have supported the environment. You've gone through a lot of the. Um, American Native Indian and you went through a lot of uh, different things that you've done and a lot of of course beautiful soundtracks do you feel like you're emerging into a new sound and a new direction with this latest CD I feel like I'm really maturing as an artist and as a composer you know I feel like I'm really I'm approaching my best work I haven't gotten there yet but I feel like it's coming and um it's fun because I, I love playing the piano more than ever. I just, you know, I, I just do it just because I love it. And, and you know, the, the more you, the older you get, the more you do it, the more seasons you get. And, you know, it just kind of keeps evolving. And I'm really, I'm really grateful for that. I, I, I hate to even almost ask this question, but I'm going to. I mean, because there have been, uh, you know, in every artist's life, when they're as prolific as you do with 60 CDs or whatever, you know, that, let alone how many YouTube things might be out there. Um, and, of course, your soundtracks and everything. Do you find one, because in your concerts you, you go back and do play some, do you find one that is still resonating, one you always want to, one CD you go back and always want to play from when you're in concert? It's not so much one CD. It's like specific songs, mm. specific songs that I will always come back to. And one of them is the first song that I ever really wrote with the intention of playing it again. Uh, it's called Spirit. And I wrote that initially back in like 1982. But it keeps evolving and I, I play it at every concert because uh, it takes me home. You know, it's just kind of at my roots sort of. And uh, yeah, there's always songs. And then right now I'm playing a lot of the songs from the Wings album which is kind of unique, actually. I play almost every song from the record in concert because it just feels good, and that's kind mm. of that's kind of unusual. And I'm really enjoying that. Well, you wrote you did a CD a couple of years ago um, called the Muse. It something it was about the Muse. I forget the name, but you did it with that beautiful cellist, right? Um, when, oh yeah, yeah. Kind of grow. But yeah. but it was interesting because um, the Muse is a little different for everyone, and. You seem to have a very good relationship with your muse. I mean, do you have these besides <laughs> musical conversations? Do you have spiritual conversations? Do you actually feel the spirit of your muse, or whatever the muse might be? Do you feel that come kind of come tap you on the shoulder or kind of whisper to you? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I do actually. And it's funny that you <clears throat> that you mentioned that because I haven't really thought about that actually. But as you put it that way, all of a sudden I'm realizing that that is so true. That I have this great relationship with my muse, and she is like everywhere. And, you know, and it just comes, she just comes to me. It's crazy. It's like I just, I just get one inspiration after another, you know, it's just never ending. And that's, that's a miracle. I mean, that's, that's just awesome and crazy. Well, it is a miracle, but at the same time, someone asked me once, I write every day, of course, and someone said, well, why do you do that? I said, because if I don't do it, then I don't get any more. If I don't listen to what I get, 
if I don't use in some way what I get, uh, I seem to close the door on it. And then it's oh, yeah. like, you know, so you, you, you get that, right? Yeah. And you gotta, you got to honor the muse oh, yeah. when the muse knocks. <laughs> you, don't, you, don't, oh, yeah. you don't close the you, door on the muse. No, no. you got to open the door and you got to say yes. Mm-hmm. you got to say yes, yes, yes. Come on in and make yourself available. Yeah. And, and that kind of strengthens the relationship and the connection. Thank you. That's so beautifully put. That sanctions the relationship. It it is something, and and it's interesting because with that relationship, it's hard to sometimes match that same feeling in a personal relationship, isn't it? God, what are you, what are you doing? Reading my mind right now, or what? <laughs> yes, I'm, like, I do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm like that's actually a problem. That's a problem that I have. It's it's not so much about personal relationship. It's like it's really almost every, anything else. Yeah, You know, the high and the connection is so beautiful and so intimate when I'm in that creative flow that when I'm doing other things, it's almost like, you know, it's, it's not as, it's hard. Let's just put it that way. It's challenging. Yeah. Well, you I know what? It shows on your face. It shows on your face in some of the pictures when you close your eyes and you're playing. You can see the bliss you're in. Well, it's just total focus. It's total oneness. You know, there's like there's no separation. There's no thought. There's no separation where you're kind of judging or looking or analyzing or you're not in your head. You can't think. You know, so it's it's total presence and total oneness. And you know, when I can find that in, a, in another human being, it's amazing. Yeah. Or with another human being, you know, it's it's incredible. Well, you find it when they're under your piano, and then you're kind of at one with that. But we're out of time, Peter, and I could talk to you forever, and I really look forward to seeing you on the 27th. How do people get tickets to that? Just go to my website, petercater.com, and click on See Peter in Concert. There's Pe- a few tickets left. Petercater.com. Better get your tickets fast because it sells out, and it's always a spiritual experience and also beautiful a very melikliki maka to you and wonderful talking to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to call in. And You're good so luck welcome. on the next Grammy. I'll be down there. I hope to see you there at the Grammy celebrations. I hope to see you too, and I hope to see you on Maui uh, on the holidays. Yes, aloha. Aloha.